Number 64. A person is standing on the equator of Earth with a radius of 3,960 miles. What is his linear and angular speeds? So let's draw the Earth. Circular? Well, kind of, right? And it's a sphere, right? So let's give it a little bit of perspective here. So there you go. Modern day Bob Ross. Gotta love that guy. Anyway, uh, it tells us that the radius here is going to be 3,900 and 60 miles, right? Now, 3,960 miles. If you wanted to calculate, you know, the diameter, you could, right? You just multiply this number by two. We don't really need it though. In any case, uh, we got to find the linear and angular speeds. So anytime you hear the word calculating a linear speed and you're talking about some object here, right? Pretend here, ready? Pretend you're at the end of this line segment. You're like a dot, right there. Okay. Now, if you were to travel around the earth, right, like so, the question is, how far would you have traveled? Okay. Linearly. How do you find that out? Well, it's, uh, what's the distance of this outer edge of the circle? You could have also done it this way. I mean, it really doesn't matter. This is a two-dimensional paper. You could have thought about it going around like that too, right? Either way, what's the linear distance of that edge? What's the length of the edge of a circle called? It's called the circumference, okay? So whenever you want to find the linear speed of something, linear speed, and it's moving in a circle, you're going to take the circumference. Hopefully I spelled that right. And then you divide it by the um, time over which it took to travel that circumference. Okay? So, let's see. Ready? The linear speed here is going to be equal to the circumference. Now, what's the formula for circumference? 2 pi r, or you could have done pi d, right? Either one. But I'm going to use this one because they gave me the radius. Simple. Okay? And then I'm going to divide it by now the time. The time it takes to travel the entire circumference, right? The time it takes to go around like this. Go around, okay? Time it takes. How long does it take to go around the Earth once? How long does it take the Earth to rotate once? Exactly, 24 hours, you could say. You could tell me it in seconds. You could tell me it in years, 1 365th.25 of a year, right? doesn't really matter. But I'm going to write 24 hours down here. Okay, now all I'm going to do is just plug in for my R here. Let's get rid of it. I'm going to plug in now the value of the radius, the 3,900, 960, okay? And your linear speed here, linear speed, you like my handwriting? I don't. So now plug it into the calculator. 2 times pi, second pi, okay, multiplied by then 3,960, you can hit enter if you want, you really don't need to, but you can enter and then divide that value by is say answer, meaning this answer up here takes it and plugs it in. Answer then divided by 24, okay? And what you're gonna find now, oops, what you're gonna find is the linear speed is going to be 1036, you know, 0.7, I can stop it there. And the units here, what were the units on the top? Well, it was the radius was given to me in miles, so it's really miles per hour, oh my goodness, right? Imagine traveling that in the highway. Definitely get a ticket. Well, then again, nobody would be able to catch you. So would you get a ticket? That's, well, now they, they have the camera. So yeah, you're screwed. Anyway, that's the linear speed. All right. You can give, you can leave it in the exact answer if you wanted. You got to make the box look a little nicer. Uh, you can leave it in the exact answer. All you would have done was taken two, multiplied it by this, 3,960, divided it by 24, and then plugged in the pi, not in the calculator, but just shoved it in at the end. Okay, doesn't matter to me what you do, um, it, you know, as far as this calculation goes. Um, and then we got to find the angular speed. Okay, anytime you're calculating angular speed, angular, yeah, why don't we change the color, right? Let's change the color. Angular speed. It's simply going to be now the number of revolutions or number of radians. It depends on what you need. What unit you need, okay? Number of revolutions divided by then the time it takes to cover the number of revolutions, right? So here's your angular speed. 
We could have also, instead of plugging hours down here, right? I mean, it could have made it simple. Just use day, right? If I did days, there's one hour in a day. So you would have just had to done this math and you would have find miles per day. It doesn't really matter. The time, It's totally irrelevant. You know, they don't tell me what unit they want. So you can do it a whole bunch of ways. Anyway, number of revolutions, right? So you can do it like this. You can say, well, it's going to Earth makes one revolution every single one hour. Uh, what? What? One day, sorry. I got confused with the days and the hours. Oh my God, it's getting late. Um, so you could say that the angular speed of then the Earth is one revolution. Let me make that a little neater. One revolution per day. That would be acceptable. You could also say that it's one revolution per 24 hours. And then all you'd have to do is take the one and then divide it then by the 24. And that'll come out to be now zero... 0.0416 repeating revolutions every single hour. That's also acceptable. These two are equivalent, right? It doesn't matter. Okay, they're both telling me the same information, just with different ratios between the time. Okay, and that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that makes a lot of sense. If it does, help us out. Subscribe, like, maybe even tell some of your classmates. Look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.